Hello everyone, this is Rachel from Lively Rachel Ann and I'm a registered nurse and I'm here today because this video has been so highly recommended that I redo because of the fact that um, the previous video you just couldn't hear me very well. And it's not that I bought a new microphone, um, I'm just going to be speaking louder. So here goes. The reason why I'm going to be doing this video and the reason why I did it before was for the fact that I wanted this to be directed towards the new nurse, um, specifically the new obstetric nurse. This video will be helpful in understanding the circumference of the cervix and how to find the cervix when you're in the vagina doing a vaginal exam. So I want to start off by saying make sure that you go into the room with any patient that you're with um, that if you don't feel comfortable doing the vaginal exam on your own, make sure that you have a preceptor or make sure that the doctor is there. Um, most likely the doctor won't be there, but make sure that you have a preceptor or another nurse that can help you. Make sure that it's well lit, especially in the beginning because you may not know um, where to go to get to the vagina. And then also make sure that the bed is at a good height for you so that you're not bending over and hurting your back or putting um, yourself in an awkward position uh, when you're checking mom's vagina. So the second thing here that I want to talk about is making sure that when you go into the vagina that you're putting two fingers into the vagina. So we're going to pretend this little opening here is the vagina. So you're going to take those two fingers and you're going to have your palm up and you're going to be entering into the vagina this way. And then um, you're going to feel what feels tight is going to be the vaginal wall. Now a lot of newer nurses, they go in as far as their fingers can go and they feel around and they feel a vaginal wall that's tight. And they may come out and say, well, I can push around on, you know, I can push and I can open my fingers and I've got the patient at two or three centimeters in diameter, meaning their cervix. In reality, what they're doing is, is they're pushing their fingers and, and moving them open and close um, against the vaginal wall, which is a muscle. That's not a true measurement of the cervix. So what I always try to tell newer nurses is that when you're going into the vagina, you're going to go in pretty much as far as you can on most moms, and you're going to be feeling with the very tips of your fingers to find the actual cervix. So finding it is like, I would say even more than half the battle. So once you actually find it, that's going to be like fireworks time because you're going to be super excited. You're like, yeah, I finally found the vagina. And, um, what it's going to feel like is if you've ever seen like a deflated balloon and because you had a pop in it or something, um, a hole poked into the balloon. And if you were to put your finger through that hole of like a balloon, um, sometimes the outside, the way that the finger fits through that hole of the balloon is pretty similar to the way that the um, cervix feels when you finally get your, when you actually touch it and are able to get your fingers near it. Um, and that's because that would be a cervix that's thinned out um, and, and can be stretchy. Um, sometimes it can be thick and non-stretchy. You just have to understand where you're going and what you're trying to feel for. And those are primarily what you're going to be feeling for. And that's what it's going to feel like. Now also, um, there are a lot of tools on every department um, in most hospitals. There, for me, there was this big plastic um, 8 by 10 uh, hard piece of plastic that had a bunch of circles on it. And um, they went up in size relatively from being a closed cervix or like, like a 1 all the way up to 10 in size. And so, um, 10 centimeters by the way. And so, those are very helpful. And I think that was the one tool that I ran to most often when I wasn't sure. And I'll say that if you aren't sure about what you're feeling, make sure that you ask another nurse to kind of check behind you. Don't tell the patient right away what you think their cervix dilation is. Come out of the room, feel it against that chart, um, and then go back in and let them know what you think you their cervix dilation is or talk with another nurse and come to a conclusion on what that truly that true measurement is that's the one tool that seems to be most common in hospitals 
but just to give you a visual of how the cervix may feel in size. So um, I use common household products. So the first one I use is some fingernail polish remover. The cap on this product is approximately two and a half centimeters in diameter. So when you're going in and you're touching and you feel that cervix, you know, you can kind of tell that this is going to be two and a half centimeters. So the more that you practice on some of these household items, and you can kind of get a muscle memory with your fingers, the more that when you go into a patient's room and you go to check their cervix, you can kind of say, oh yeah, maybe between two and three or three and four centimeters dilated. So that's kind of helpful. The next item that I have is barbecue sauce. And this cap size is approximately four centimeters in diameter. So again, you're going into that vaginal wall, you get all the way back to the back of the um, vaginal canal and you're feeling that cervix and you can kind of run your fingers along and you can tell that that patient is approximately four centimeters in diameter. The next item that I have is jelly um, that you put on your sandwich. And this is approximately six and a half centimeters um, if all, all the way around from one side of the tip of the cap to the other. So when you go in, then you're going to be feeling, feeling, and you feel that it's about six and a half centimeters in diameter. So that's a good visual. And the last video I used a jar of peanut butter that was one of the big economy sizes, but this time I have hot cocoa. And this is a 20 ounce container and the lid on this is approximately 10 centimeters. So um, when I'm doing a check, most times I can't really get one finger um, touching one side and another finger touching the other side when I'm feeling the cervix because at that point, most times there's a head that's just kind of popping through in the way and um, you can kind of just get around the head and be able to feel on either side that truly in fact that that mom is complete. Or most times the mom will look at you and say, not really say anything, she's, her body's just naturally trying to start pushing. So that's another indicator that she's complete and ready to push. In conclusion, this is for um, instructional purposes only, just to help that newer nurse. Also to give you a visual as to understanding different cervix sizes in um, centimeters. And then also, just to make sure that you all are aware that um, if you don't feel comfortable, don't make up a number. Uh, don't put your fingers in and think you're feeling the cervix and, and confidently come out of the room and tell your nurse or preceptor that you do feel a cervix when you don't. Just be honest. Um, if you don't feel it, that's okay. Uh, if you do think you feel it, and your preceptor or your other nurse feels that same cervix and you're both on the same page, then throw a party for yourself. Be excited. This is a wonderful job, a wonderful opportunity, a way to grow, and just make sure that you um, communicate with your fellow nurses and your doctors and just everybody on staff so that you're all on the same page. And to get more practice, offer to uh, feel all of the patient's cervixes and do all of their cervical checks and exams for the other nurses and and just see. The more you do it, the more you'll get feel more comfortable doing it and then the more people will respect you and rely on your um, knowledge to, to do an actual cervical exam accurately. So good luck and we will talk to you later. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe.